Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Bill, and I am the Ape Investor. Today, I want to look at a couple different things. Uh, one, I do want to look at the chart on AMC, but more specifically, I want to talk about a couple of catalysts that are lining up for us in these meme stocks. And I want to talk about is the contracts. I want to talk about specific dates for earnings, and I want to talk about what I think may be happening. So first of all, I want to take a look at this chart here. This is AMC over about the past year or so. You can see back in 2021 when we had the run up back in June or back in January and then subsequently back in June that ran us up to $72. What I believe happened was market makers and all the other banks were caught off guard back in January 2021 when we ran the price up because there was no shares available left. We bought up the entire float so the price started to run. Market makers went out, naked shorted us down, thought we would go away. They took out some ISDA contracts, which are private derivatives, basically, against AMC. They took them out for six months, thinking, hey, we'll have all the apes go away in six months. They're not going to buy back in because we're going to naked short it down or sell shares we don't have or hide these uh, married puts, essentially. And so the price started going down, as you can see, back in February. But apes held, so... In June, when those ISDA contracts came due, they had to re-roll them. And what happened was subsequently they had to cover and then re-short. Well, in June, they thought, well, if it didn't happen in six months, let's roll it out another year. So here we are approaching June of 2022. And I believe these ISDA contracts are going to roll along with lots of futures. And we're going to have another large spike again. But if you look at the chart, it's the exact same chart, just replicated over 12 months instead of six months you can even see the bump up here back in April slash May before we had the big run in June of 2021. Looks very similar to what we just had. And so I think here in the near term, we're going to run up again, pull back a little, and take off. As those ISA contracts come due on, in the June time period, um, ironically enough, I'm going to show you here in just a second, something else is in June. So what else lines up in the June time frame? You can see here, if we go head over to investor.gamestop.com and the proxy documents, the notice for the 2022 annual meeting of stockholders to be held on June 2nd, 2022, right when those ISDA contracts are set to roll. So if we head over to the ISDA website, I'll explain to you exactly what the ISDA contracts are. So here we are on ISDA.org. Uh, just in case you didn't know what ISDA actually means, it's International Swaps and Derivative Association Incorporated. That's what it means, is where you can go and trade swaps and derivatives with other parties over the counter, meaning off the exchange, uh, to hedge your liability so people don't see what's going on. They're basically like secret contracts. And I know uh, like AC... Um, AMC Biggums has been talking about them a lot on his YouTube channel. So if you want to know more about them, uh, you can check out him as well. But the part I want to look at is this types of equity derivatives below here. And you can see it says equity, equity swaps are intended to synthetically replicate the price performance of an exchange traded security or an index or basket of such securities. An end user may choose to replicate either the long or short performance of the underlier. A party who is long will benefit from any increase in the price of the security. Conversely, a party who is short will benefit from any decrease. Equity options provide the buyer the right but not obligation to buy or sell an exchange traded security or an index or basket of securities at a pre-agreed price, the strike price. These may be physically settled, delivery of the underlying asset itself, or cash settled, payment to replicate the economics of settlement. The buyer will pay a premium to enter into the equity option. Option transactions may allow for exercise on a single agreed date or any time during the transaction. So I believe they're entering into these basket contracts, which include Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, GME, Cost, BlackBerry, all those stocks that ran up together in the meme stock basket, I believe are rolled into this one big one, which is probably why Ryan Cohen went and bought into Bed Bath & Beyond. And I'm going to explain here in just a minute why I think he did that. So remember back when Ryan Cohen tweeted uh, that poop emoji for Boston Consulting Group. Well, if you look here, this is a release from 2019, April 22nd, 2019. And you'll see that uh, below it says the five newly appointed independent directors effective May 1, 2019. If you look here, you can see um, 
right here. Harsha, uh, current senior advisor at Boston Consulting Group. So you can see right there, Boston Consulting Group has made its way into Bed Bath & Beyond, and they did the same thing at several other companies, including GameStop. And this is something that Ryan Cohen wants to stop. He wants to take control and kick these people out, which he thinks would then be good for the stock. So that is the reason why he moved on Bed Bath & Beyond. Also, it is part of one of the meme stocks within the basket that we believe is being shorted by market makers like Citadel and others. So that is why he moved. Now on to... So now I go over to sec.gov and I pull up a GameStop document and I see that it says right here, RC Ventures will not, among other things, acquire beneficial ownership in or aggregate economic exposure to directly or indirectly more than 19.9% of the company's outstanding common stock. So if you know, he recently bought more stock, but he only bought up to, I believe, 12% of the GameStop stock. He hinted at doing more though, I believe, in this tweet I'm about to show you. So here it is over on Twitter on April 27th, Ryan Cohen tweeted, what should Apple make next? And he highlighted iToilet, even though iBidet had the check mark on it for having one, the highlighted one at the moment is iToilet because below he wrote iToilet is imperative to the future of humanity. Now, if you know anything about Ryan Cohen and when he tweets, if he tweets something sexual in nature, typically the stock goes up. But if he tweets something about a toilet or having to eat too much fruit, like having to go to the bathroom, anything that has to do with the bathroom, usually means the stock is going to go down. And you can see here he says, in my office, and he puts a toilet. Typically, that means something's going down. Now he equates this to Apple, which he owns shares in. Is he going to dump, aka toilet, Apple shares and buy up the remaining pieces of GameStop stock up to that 19.9% running up to that annual shareholders meeting. I think he's going to. And the reason why is because he's posted a lot of stuff about Moon Man. They have the NFT coming out. The dividend is going to be voted on, which I believe will pass, and they'll get issued more shares. It's just more to push against that basket of swaps or derivatives that the market makers have taken out. If he can push up the price of GameStop going into that role, it's going to hurt them even more. So that's why he said shorts are the, what, the dumb stormtroopers of the galaxy or something to that nature, alluding to May 4th, Star Wars Day, stormtroopers. I believe he may start buying those shares up on May 4th to push the price up. And then astronaut day being May 5th is when they'll release that NFT platform. So I think big news is coming. AMC also moved back their earnings to the 9th. I think they're going to play off that catalyst. I think Adam Aaron and, and Ryan Cohen know what's going on. Ryan Cohen seems to be able to tweet, knowing whether or not the GameStop stock will go up or down. He is following that pattern that I showed you earlier in AMC, which is just elongated from half a year to two years out. So we're seeing the same sort of Wyckoff accumulation pattern going on where they're accumulating, running up the price, then accumulating, um, you know, so if you watch any of the videos, say Astro or Composite Man, aka Dave, um, he'll discuss Wyckoff accumulation. So it's something everybody should really check out and it helps you identify key support levels within uh, this algorithm, what it's doing. So I'm gonna show you in just a minute. So if you head over to uh, Rico and you check out one of his videos, he wears these bandanas. He's wearing a red bandana on this one, so he's very easy to identify. But just type in Rico AMC uh, Wyckoff or something of that nature, and you'll see that in his video it says Phase A, Phase B, Phase C, Phase D, and Phase E. That is Wyckoff. And so um, you can see we are currently in phase E, which is the last phase before then, after accumulations occur, then they mark the price up. So I'm gonna show you here in the Wyckoff diagram. So here's an example. Uh, this is the Wyckoff accumulation schematic number one. You can see that we currently hit that spring eight where we dropped down to that $14. We ran all the way up to that sign of strength, uh, nine, which was $34. We pulled back now. And we're about ready to jump the creek to that sign of strength again in a breakout pull back and then we're going to do what we would consider the MOAS come June. So that is the last part of the schematic. That is actually phase E where we pop out and we run. Uh, you can see this looks very similar to what happened to AMC. 
they pulled the price down. It went up and down, up and down, up and down. And then uh, they accumulated shares and now they're going to mark the price up. So here's a chart of AMC and you can see the volume is drying up significantly after that run up uh, in late March. Um, all of April, the volumes just started to drop, 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 drop. And you would expect a large down volume on Friday with a huge drop in the market. But really, we didn't have a whole lot of volume at all. So to me, that's a very bullish sign. And now something else that came out Friday, uh, which I'm super bullish about, I'm going to share with you. And finally, what I wanted to show all of you guys, this has uh, been on a lot of people's radar from Friday, April 29th is this DTCC haircut that came through. And so this is uh, collateral changes based on the different types of asset classes. You can see treasuries now, they're asking for an additional two to 12%, depending on the maturity date on those uh, mortgage-backed securities. Anything that's basically not AAA rated will now get a 100% haircut, meaning if you're holding mortgage-backed securities that aren't AAA rated, they're gonna want all of that money back collateral-wise. Uh, the big kicker comes when you get further down here when it talks about uh, equities. And municipal bonds, you can see municipal bonds, anything even triple A rated. Now they want 25% collateral against those uh, money market instruments. You can see the percentage. I'm going to put a link in the description below to this uh, DTCC um, collateral haircut. But you can see down here equity securities, common preferred listed on a U.S. National Securities Exchange, NASDAQ, or Canadian uh, Securities Exchange, 25% they want collateral for anything under uh, the price, or $10 or more, anything under $10 goes up exponentially from 30 to 50 to 100%. Um, you can see warrants also, um, and rights and units uh, for mutual funds, they have those 50% and 100% depending on uh, the price of the stock, $5 and above or $5 and below. Basically anything $5 and below, 100% collateral. So it goes on and on. There are all kinds of different haircuts in here according to the type of security. So I urge you all to take a look at this, but it looks like there are going to be some margin calls coming on Monday when this kicks in. So that's it from the Ape Investor. Please like and share this video and subscribe for more videos like this.